All right, welcome back to another movement analysis here. And today we have Carol. She sent us in a isometric movement path from standing to 90 back up to standing using the squat path. So I'm going to start by playing this through and just kind of pointing some things out that I notice. So as you can see, very nice job achieving depth. Probably has really good hip flexion. And didn't get all the way into knee flexion, but she can sit all the way back down because it looks like she has very, very good hip flexibility. And I'm going to assume she has a very good frog stretch because as she goes through this isometric movement path into the next 90-90, you can tell how much hip abduction and external rotation she has, which is great. Then she comes back, extends the knee or hip, pulls it back in. Pulls that in, gets up onto her ankle very nicely, has to bring her foot up, and she is back up to standing. Okay, great. So let's break this down a little bit. So first thing, we're going to go through the squat, which she does a great job coming all the way down, which we know we need to be able to achieve as low of a position as possible. Now I want to highlight, even though she, um, actually I got to get the drawing tool here, even though she still has some space here, to reach down that probably is uh, due to a lack of ankle dorsiflexion so you can see that she achieves that knee flexion but because her ankles might be a little stiff she isn't able to let her knees track forward which is fine because you can tell that as she starts to as she starts to drop her knee in she's able to make up for that lack of depth by being able to go through hip internal rotation. So this is a very good example of how having flexibility is useful in the sense that you have passive access to these positions and using your body weight and external load, you can access these positions. Doesn't mean you can control them though. So we're gonna take a closer look through this. She drops the knee. Like I said, she's able to stay very vertical and just sit straight back down. And I wanna highlight what that means. If she's able to hit this position right here, that means she has a really good amount of hip internal rotation, very good tibial external rotation, which is great, right? Now, I wanna point something out. Uh, we're gonna notice that because she has so much flexibility, I can tell that there needs to be a little bit more strength or she lacks the uh, strength across her flexibility because as I play this through, you can tell that there's a lack of tension, stiffness. She has to use her hands, even though she has all that flexibility. And so that's a very good example right here, right? So by, by bringing your leg back into hip extension, she should technically be able to just lift that straight out to the side and bring it back, but she has to lean forward. So that means that she is unable to use her hip abductors and internal rotators to get in that position actively. And so she has to lean over to the side. So that is an indicator to me that that's probably an area where she may want to uh, spend some more time in strengthening wise. Right there, right? Obviously we know that the hip internal ro rotators and abductors are important. And um, let's play this through. Like I said, she has very good flexibility. You can tell she most likely has her le or right sit bone and uh, left sit bone really, really uh, close to the ground. She's very vertical, which means that she is not curving through the spine, so she has access to this position very easily. And we are gonna continue on with this, and this is where I wanna point out, right here. So as she starts bringing this out, she should be, she should be pushing this down very, very hard. Now she is just rolling through this position because I wanna highlight, pay attention to the tension. You can tell there's a lack of tension throughout this motion because you can see almost like like twitching, not twitching, sorry, kind of like there's a natural flow in the positions, but not due to tension, due to just simply moving through it. Right there's a really good example. If she was actively pushing down here with her right hip, that wouldn't be coming up. So that means that she's not really pushing apart, she's just rolling over. Now all that means is that she probably just has to practice creating the tension through these ranges, which is exactly why uh, it's a very, very good option to use to train. Um, I'm just pointing out that having so much flexibility, you do have to have a little bit more conscious effort in trying to create more tension because you have a lot more ground to cover. And so I'm just going to play this through. We see that again, she has to lean forward to kind of get that leg back. 
And so that means that both her right and left side, she has to work on those hip muscles there, okay? Um, all right, so let's play this through to finish up. Same thing there. Oh, that's a very good example, actually. So we know she has, if she were to take her leg passively, she could probably keep her pelvis exactly where it is, but that hip could probably internally rotate up to this high. So it could probably go that far. But when we, when she asks her hip to move actively, look what she has to do. She has to lean all the way, come out of that. So this is exactly what we talk about when there's a deficit between active range of motion and passive. So this is her passive. Now actively, she has to get all the way out here before she can create any tension to lift up, okay? So we know that a lot of what she's gonna to need to do is active hip internal rotation. Obviously, there's many ways to do that, right? So here, another clear example. Very, very good hip internal rotation. I keep bringing that up because it ju I just wanna show you how important it is. If you have these ranges of motion, it's useful because they serve as buffers for getting into positions, but just be conscious, you do have to cover more ground and you have to train them. Here, very nice job getting onto that ankle. Right, that means that she's very, I wanna point out actually, she's doing an excellent job you can tell she's closing off this space right here between her chest and her thigh, which means she's really using all of her hip flexion, which is exactly what you want. And as you do that, you have more leverage. So all your body weight is able to transition forward. And if you do that, it actually makes it easier to mount onto your ankle. Whenever there's a space here, right? If there's too much space here, or you're not really using all your hip flexion, then you actually have to account for that and you have to reach forward with your arms even more to try and transition that body weight forward. Um, that's why if you uh, stay connected through this hip flexion, it actually makes it easier to shift that weight forward. So you can tell even though she's missing that ankle dorsiflexion, her hips save the day. So I'm gonna play this. And here she has to pick it up to bring it back to neutral. So the reason she had to do that was because uh, she didn't bring her hip forward. So let's see if I can rewind here. Notice how like, in the start of the position, normally we get here when we get to the 90-90 and then we transit and then we bring it back that way. She didn't do that. So now her her foot is all the way over here. So if she were to, when she comes back here, if she were to have brought this knee here, her foot would be here and she would just have to roll that open. But she has to now instead pick it up and then bring it forward which is fine, right? I made that mistake actually in my video, so maybe she's copying mine. Um, and boom. And she's facing back to the camera, which is great. And very nice bottom position, and she's back up to the top. So uh, thank you, Carol, for sending this in. I hope you guys understood and kind of saw some of the things I was pointing out regarding her flexibility and mobility. Just quick reminder, right? Oh, I wanna write something, flexibility. Oh God, maybe I shouldn't do that. Flexibility, ability, flexibility. Oh God, maybe I ruined this video by doing this, whatever. Does not equal mobility. Very important, okay? So you do have to have strength on top of your flexibility. Appreciate you guys. Let me know what you think below. If you have any questions, comments, um, like this, share this for anybody who might benefit from this kind of analysis. And if you want me to analyze anything, let me know what you suggest.